Alright, this is a quick video on how to install an M2 drive, solid state drive. This is specifically the team group MP34. Got this from Newegg. Um, came with some junk on the box, like somebody was eating like way too many Skittles and just like spit it out in the box. I have no idea what they're doing in the warehouse, um, but I did get a good deal on this from Newegg, so what am I going to say? Um, I guess you get what you pay for. But um, this is a 4 terabyte form factor 2280 so it is a small ssd and it is an nvme drive uh, pci express um, nvme means non-volatile memory express it's a protocol designed for high speed data transfer um, so i'm looking forward to using this as sort of a four terabyte junk drive but something i can use with all my ai stuff also with this i got a small um, 64 gigabyte micro sd card it's an extended capacity ultra high speed class 1 sd card so i was very happy with this and um, i plan on using this um, just on the side to transfer files but i digress let's open up the pc that's going to be the first step make sure everything is unplugged power off and of course it's always full of dirt so i'm going to vacuum this out while i'm at it i mean might as well um, and so the first step that we're going to do here is we're going to look at this mess that is inside my pc um, the geforce rtx 4090 takes up a lot of space um, along with the cpu cooler um, it looks like something that comes from a car um, and I will link in the description below um, all the different parts and pieces that are in this PC. Um, but this is an AI powerhouse for sure. Um, the first thing we're going to do is remove the video card. And, um, you know, I can't really get my fingers in there, but there is a little, like, switch you need to pop back. And then you kind of wiggle the video card out. And you want to do this very carefully. Um, and so here I am pulling out the RTX 4090. And you can see just how large this thing is. It has three air cooling fans um, and this is pretty much the top of the line video card right now uh, in terms of VRAM um, for prosumer uh, computers uh, doing AI. So now um, on the motherboard there is a little plate that we're going to have to remove um, so I just have a Phillips screwdriver here and there are three screws to remove this plate and behind the plate are the M2 drives that are you know they install right into the motherboard. So as I remove this plate, there are three Phillips screws to take out. So I'm going to carefully do that and try not to lose the screws. Um, I will note that I am not wearing my anti-static wrist strap with this. Um, that is usually preferred just so you don't, you know, uh, have any static shock and damage any equipment. Um, but here's the plate and you'll see that underneath the plate there is uh, some thermal pads. And these thermal pads will help conduct heat uh, off of your drives. Um, and so here is an image and you'll see one of the M2 drives that is already installed and here is the team group NVMe drive and we are just going to push it into one of the slots at an angle and it's going to snap in. You're going to hear a little snap as it pops into the slot and again it's at an angle so it's not flat. It's actually kind of standing up a bit um, in almost like a, a V shape. And then um, with this motherboard, there are just little uh, quick connect tabs for these drives. So we just push the tab down and lock it in place. Um, and in your case, you may have a, a Phillips screw or similar screw to screw it down. And then um, with a thermal pad, just make sure you remove the, um, the seal there. And then we're gonna stick that right to the top of the drives. We're gonna put the screws back on and the M2 drive is fully installed. And then just work backwards to put everything back together. The next step is actually going to be powering on the PC and, you know, starting up your M2 drive. Um, from the Windows PC, you can right click on the start menu and you can click on disk management to get to your disk manager. Or you can just search for disk management and click on it there. Um, Windows is going to recognize that you have a new hard drive installed, this new M2 SSD. And you'll see this pop up. Um, if it does not, I'm just going to click cancel here and take you through the steps on how to initialize the drive. I will quickly note that you do want to choose GPT in most cases. This is a modern and advanced partition style. MBR, or master bit record, is older and really it's for legacy operating systems. Um, so anyway, I clicked cancel and you're going to see disk 3 here. It's going to say unallocated here. If you right click on this, you can say initialize disk and you're going to see that little pop up window again. I'm going to choose GPT. This is a GUID partition table protocol. And now that that is complete, we're going to go to the next step 
and um, what we're actually going to do here is we are going to right click where it says unallocated we're going to say new simple volume and it'll take you through a setup wizard where you can set up your partitions the way you want um, so i'm just going to assign any drive letter um, ntfs file system is typical for windows i'm going to give my uh, you know drive a name i'm going to call it team group because that is the brand of drive that it was i'll perform a quick format on it um, i think that's always good and then i will finish up this wizard and get the drive initialized if you go to my computer or my PC after this is done, you're going to see that new drive there and you can start using it as you need to. But I first want to showcase how to do some benchmarking with this. So we're going to go to the website that you see on the screen. This is Crystal Do World. Um, there is a free software called Crystal Discmark. It's that specific software um, and we're going to do some benchmarking on speed tests, read and write speeds um, with this SSD. So if you're in software on the top of the screen, you want to find specifically Crystal Disk Mark. Um, there's two editions. There's the normal edition and the Shizuku edition, um, which is based on a cool um, anime novel series. And I, of course, chose the boring version, um, but I did download that and I unzipped the zip file. I'm going to hit the settings and choose the MVME option um, as this drive does have that protocol. And I'm going to make sure from the drop down menu here, I'm going to choose the correct letter drive because I want to test the G drive, which I just installed. It also has number of passes set at five on the very left here. I only want to do one pass, so I'm going to change that five to a one. And then for the test size, um, you can select various sizes of test data that will be used for the benchmark. It goes from 50 megs to 500 to beyond one gig. Um, I usually see one gig use, and I think that's appropriate. Um, and really, that just affects the duration and intensity of the benchmark, but one gig is pretty pretty solid. Um, and so now that everything is going, just hit the start button and then we're just going to wait for everything to start running and you're going to see things starting to populate in the program as the test progresses. So once this is complete, um, on the top left, you're going to see SEQ1M Q8T1. Um, this test, uh, means it's a sequential read and write test with a Q depth of eight using one thread. And basically it looks at how fast your SSD can deal with big chunks of data. So when you're copying and moving large files, it gives you that read write speed there. Um, and the read speed was in the 3000 range, write speed was in the 2500 range. Um, this is, is a bit lower than the um, specs that were shown on the um, website for the team group um, M2 drive here, but it was really good overall. Um, this is pretty typical for an M2 NVMe drive. Um, the second down test, um, it's similar to the first one, but it, you know it's checking how your drive can handle lots of different files at the same time. Um, and this is a sequential read and write test. It's using the 128 kilobyte byte blocks uh, with a Q depth of 32 and one thread. So it's assessing performance with large files, but with a higher Q depth, right? Um, so it can show how your drive can handle multiple tasks at one time. And with the read and write speed here, um, you would expect it to be a little lower than the first one, but it's still in a, in a very high and a very good range for this drive. The last two tests are the random read write tests. Um, so the first one was RND 4K Q32 T16. This is a random read write test with four kilobyte blocks at a Q depth of 32 across 16 threads. And this is simulating more of a typical PC workload, um, such as running applications, operating systems. And since this SSD, you know, it was achieving a 1300 uh, megabits per second read speed and then, you know, about a 1087 megabits per second write speed, you know, this is indicative of very good performance um, with multitasking, right? So um, if you're, you know, trying to find lots of pieces of information quickly, if you're running searches on this drive or opening various programs, uh, this tests how fast your um, drive can do that. So um, really good for uh, that as well. And then the last test, this is a random read and write speed with four kilobyte blocks at a Q depth of one and a single thread. Um, and it's representing how the drive performs uh, doing everyday tasks without multi-threading uh, or queue, right? Um, so the, uh, the speeds here at 43 uh, megabits per second read and 168 
megabits per second write. Um, these are decent speeds uh, for very small random tasks. So overall, this is really showing how quickly your drive can handle one task at a time when it's a small random job. So if you're opening a document, starting a program, you know, it's not as fast as, as other tests. And this is to be expected as this is um, doing a random read write test. And um, this is a very good speed for an SSD of this type. So that covers how to install an M2 solid state drive and how to set it up in Windows and how to even benchmark test uh, what you purchased. So if you found this video helpful to you, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.